Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. A little while ago I did a video about products that sneakily went up in price and I mentioned in that video that if you wanted to see it I could do a video kind of talking about some of the economic factors that affect the price of makeup and maybe explain why it would go up. I got a lot of really positive feedback on that so I thought I'd do that today, kind of like a makeup economics video. I have three main economic factors that I want to talk about. First one is demand, the second is cost of production, and the third is marketing. And obviously I want to start this video by saying I'm not a professional economist. I don't know the ins and outs of the makeup industry. I don't know exactly what goes into pricing or why certain products are more expensive than others. This is more coming from the point of view of a makeup enthusiast, someone who likes looking at the economics behind stuff. And I am going to talk about more high level general kind of stuff versus like specific examples because I don't know exactly what companies are doing. So first let's talk about demand. Demand is a very popular term within the economic world. Basically, if there's a high demand for a product, it means a lot of people want it, a lot of people are willing to spend their money on it. And when you're trying to invent a new product or start a business, the main thing you want to do is see if there's a market for it and see if it's something that people have a demand for. Under the demand umbrella, I'm going to be talking about two main things elasticity and substitutes. When we're trying to figure out what the relationship between the demand of a product and the price is, a good way to start is to look at the elasticity of demand. When we're looking at elasticity, we're trying to figure out how much the demand is going to change when the price changes. So if something has a very inelastic demand, that means that if the price were to go up, if the price were to change, the demand would not change. And alternatively, if something has a very elastic demand, subtle price changes can vastly change the demand for the product. An example of something with a very inelastic demand for me personally is gasoline. I need to drive to work in order to make money and survive. Even if the price for gas changes, my consumption of gas is not going to change. I'm still going to get gas just as often as I already do because I need it in order to get to work. And the reason that gasoline has such an inelastic demand for me personally is because I don't have a lot of substitutes. If maybe I could run my car on milk or water or something more affordable, if the price of gasoline were to go up, then I could use something else to fill my tank. If I had more substitutes for gasoline, then price changes in gasoline would affect the demand more and make it more elastic. That is my second topic, substitutes. If something has more substitutes or more alternatives, then there's a good chance the demand is not going to be as inelastic because you have options if the price gets too high. In general, I think for me, most makeup products have a pretty elastic demand. If a foundation I really like decides to go up in price by like $5, I'll reconsider purchasing it again because I have so many other foundations that I can buy instead. When I think of some makeup products that have an inelastic demand, the two major products that come to mind for me are the Shiseido Facial Cottons and the Cinema Secrets Brush Cleaner. I don't know of any major dupes for those two products. Those are very popular products and they are two products that have gone up in price quite a bit even within the past year or so, but people still really like them and still enjoy buying them, mainly because there aren't really a lot of substitutes for that product. And part of me thinks that the company knows that, so they might as well charge a little bit more slowly over time in order to get more revenue because they know that people aren't going to just stop buying it just because the price is going up. So when we're looking at the demand for a product, which heavily indicates what the price is going to be charged, looking at elasticity and substitute availability is very important. The second topic I want to talk about is cost of production. This to me is the most important subject when it comes to determining price and figuring out why price is increasing. Because if all of a sudden it becomes more expensive to create a product, that is going to be reflected in the price. Companies are not going to let their margins be shrunk by higher production costs without offsetting that onto the customer. I have four major topics within the cost of production. The first one is wages and labor. Second is tariffs. Third is scarcity of ingredients. And fourth is improving the quality or the formula or the packaging. The first topic within cost of production I want to discuss is wages and labor. Whenever you look at creating an actual product, you need people to go out and get the ingredients, you need people to put them together and process it, you need people to package the product, and lastly you need people to actually transport your product 
to stores and other locations. So in order to create one product, you actually have to have a lot of hands working on it. Let's say uh, within a company, the employees decide to unionize and negotiate for higher wages, then obviously it's going to be more expensive to pay them to do the work. And so prices in labor are going up for the company, meaning the price for the product is also gonna go up so that it doesn't eat into the company's margins. For me personally, I don't mind paying more for a product if I know that that money is being reflected in giving people a living wage. In fact, for me, if a company were to be very transparent about that and say, hey, we're increasing the price of all of our products because we decided to pay our laborers a higher wage, then I would still be very likely to still purchase that product because I know that the people who are making this product are being paid a livable wage. That's not a big motivator for everyone, but I know that a lot of people are more likely to support a company that has better humanitarian efforts. <laughs> the second topic I want to talk about is tariffs. Tariffs have to do with importing. Some countries or regions have special tariff agreements with other countries and regions and they keep tariffs low in order to incentivize trade between the two parties. And also whenever two countries are maybe not necessarily at war with each other but they're not getting along, tariffs can increase to make trade more expensive between the two countries. That's a very topical subject in the country I live in currently. There's currently one country in particular that the U.S. trades a lot with and has with for a long time and tariffs for that country are increasing as a result of some political decisions being made and as a result it's making it more expensive to bring their products in and to have our products brought over to them. Politics and economics pretty much are hand in hand in a lot of ways so you can't really talk about tariffs without talking about politics. So if for some reason the tariffs fluctuate and go very high, it's going to be a lot more expensive to bring that product into the U.S. in order to bring it to stores, and as a result, the price is going to go up as well. The third topic I want to talk about is scarcity of ingredients. I'm going to use the Shiseido facial cottons as an example. The main ingredient I'm assuming in facial cottons is cotton, and that is something that needs to be extracted from the earth. It is a natural resource. Let's say for some reason there's a bull weevil invasion or something happens with the weather, and the, the amount of cotton that's produced one year is half of what it normally should be. Because it's harder to get your hands on the cotton, and because it's more rare, the price of it is going to go up. You obviously have people in the textile industry and other industries that need cotton fighting over this depleted resource, and as a result, the price is going to go up because it's more rare. So any number of reasons from a bad harvest to uh, natural disasters or really anything could affect how much of a certain product is made, and that can affect the price of the product that uses it. And the fourth cost of production topic I want to talk about is the changing of the formula, the quality, or the packaging of the product. Sometimes companies will take a product, sometimes a very popular product, and they'll do something to increase the quality. Sometimes it's to fix um, some issues that customers have with the packaging, with actually using the product. Or sometimes they do something to improve the quality of the formula, maybe they change out an ingredient with a higher quality one, or they add something to make it better in some way and all of those things are going to make it more expensive to produce that product. So sometimes when a company does that, it makes it more expensive to produce, and as a result, it's going to make the price more expensive. And the third topic I'm just gonna to touch on briefly is marketing. Um, a lot of companies out there have a lot of really expensive brand trips or they give out a ton of PR to people to really get the marketing out there. They have really expensive commercials, they make sure like they're being exposed a lot and that costs a lot of money. A lot of especially larger makeup companies have a really solid marketing team and they pay a lot of money in order to make sure that their product is being put out there so that people can see it and want to buy it. I am one who thinks that marketing is very important. I understand why people who work in marketing and are good at what they do get paid as much as they do because they have a really, really big hand in generating demand for products and therefore creating a market for something. And even if you aren't a large company, it's still important that you're putting yourself out there and showing people what you have and that costs money to do. Another thing I'm not 100% sure of, but if a company starts to sell their product through the Ulta website or the Sephora website, I think that they do have to give a portion of the money they make to Ulta or Sephora. If you have a deal with Ulta or Sephora, your products are in hundreds of more stores 
than they would be if you were just selling online. And you're literally showing people in person what your product can do because you have it in more stores. It really does help exposure for especially a lot of smaller brands. And it just makes it easier to access and people are more likely to buy it as a result. And I do think Sephora and Ulta and larger chains like that, they do take a portion of the money that you make off selling those products because they're helping you to get your product out there. And so that makes it more expensive as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if some companies that started selling through Ulta and Sephora, they either their margins went down a little bit. This could also make prices less expensive as well. Um, maybe they have a deal with Ulta or Sephora that they, they lower the price a little bit so people are more likely to buy it. I'm not really sure what those contracts are like. I don't really obviously get to see that kind of information because that's probably very top secret stuff. But I'm sure having a contract with a distributor or a reseller like that does cost money. I'm sure having a relationship with them to get your product out there is going to cost you money and that could also be reflected in the price of the product as well. Those are the three main topics I wanted to talk about today. I didn't want this video to be too too long. If you would like to see a part two for this, I do have a couple other economic factors that I could discuss that also affect price. So if you'd like to see me do a second part of this video, please let me know in the comments. I don't really do a ton of videos like this because they're not super makeup focus. I'm not talking about specific products or showing you anything. I'm kind of just talking and I don't know if that's really something that interests people who are watching my channel but it, I seem to have some demand for this video whenever I first talked about it in my last price change video and it is kind of fun to talk about something different and talk about the economic implications of what we buy. If this is something that interests you, I definitely recommend checking out the channel Terrible Decisions. She is someone with a psychology background and she talks a lot about the psychology of shopping and what psychological tricks companies play on you or what certain marketing techniques are used to change like your shopping behavior. And she gives a lot of really good information and I just really love those videos because it kind of gives me a little peek into how companies market their products and what kind of stuff they do to make you buy their stuff. So I'll have her channel and some of those videos linked below. They're very interesting. I definitely recommend checking them out. She is currently doing a no buy too, so she does a lot of videos on that as well. And I just really love Tara. I think she's a great person and I love her channel. So any chance I get to shout her out. Thanks so much for listening to me ramble today. I hope this was an interesting video that you liked. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.